Good morning, Polar Bears. Happy Friday, y'all. It's February 5th, 2021, and we're back for another edition of Engineering Design with me, your host, Mr. B. Yeah, let's get, let's jump right into it, y'all. So go ahead and pause the video. We're going to find six differences between the two photos. Go ahead and type it in your form. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, y'all. So again, we start off every class with these uh, just to kind of get our brains thinking, to warm up our brains. This is part of engineering in general, but also just part of problem solving, which is engineering design. Okay, so on to our next challenge. Uh, I'm sure you're ready for it. Yeah, yeah, we're doing paper airplanes. Yes, there's a lot that goes into it. We're gonna hopefully learn a lot today. We are gonna be using our engineering design process, y'all. So, hmm, you might ask, which ones are we, which steps are we working on? The same ones from our first challenge, the first day of our first challenge, working on ask, on imagine, and on plan. We're gonna figure out, well, what is, what is the problem? We're gonna brainstorm a lot today. We're also gonna plan out. We might not draw anything today, but we're gonna make sure we have everything we need for next week. So what is our problem? It does deal with airplanes, right? It does deal with paper airplanes, I should say. So our problem, our goal is fly a paper airplane as far as possible. You know, fly means you're not gonna hop in and be the pilot, you're gonna throw it. And I'm sure, you know, this is an example from yesterday. Some of y'all may have seen me uh, make an airplane of my own. So let's check it out. Shout out to coach. Shout out to coach Mac for recording here. Fixing it. This paper airplane. Nothing in it. Nothing holding it together. God is our witness. And Mr. B is our pilot. Yes, sir. There go. Nice, dude. There I lost go. that in the all right, you can rewatch that. You can play it back if you want. I'm just saying, can you beat my paper airplane? That is the ultimate question. Can you beat my paper airplane? We'll find out next week. Here, sorry, y'all. Whoops. Okay, a big thing to mention. We're not going to be testing paper, paper airplanes today. We, are, we will not be testing them today. So please don't make yours. Don't fly yours, I should say, today. What materials might we need? The cool thing is that for a paper airplane, guess what? All you need is paper. You can have blank uh, white printer paper. You can have lined paper. You can have, maybe if you have like some colored paper, some cardstock that you might wanna use, hey, by all means use it. But any of those materials is okay. That is all fair game. So just if you wanna go out and buy some, buy some, if not, those of you on campus, I'll make sure y'all have some white paper at the very least, but you can use anything that you are that is available to you. Okay, let's get into some of the science. How does a paper behind how a, a paper airplane fly and honestly how any airplane flies. So we're gonna watch this video. Airplane fly. Well, it's all about forces. And in fact, the forces that help paper airplanes glide are the same ones that keep a real airplane flying high in the sky. A force is something that pushes or pulls on something else. And there are a couple of different forces that act on your paper airplane to make it fly. First, you need a force that creates forward movement. That kind of force is called thrust. In real airplanes, thrust is created by engines, which make the jet move forward by taking in a bunch of air and then pushing it out the back really fast. But our airplane is just made out of paper, no engines. So where are you going to get the thrust? That's right, from you. When you throw a paper airplane, you're providing the thrust by pushing the plane forward. After that initial push, your plane doesn't get any more thrust. It just glides, which is one of the reasons that it eventually falls to the ground. We don't just want our plane to go forward. We want it to float on the air. So we need another force to get our airplane flying high. This one's called lift, and it comes from the shape of the plane. Try making an unfolded piece of paper fly. 
It's hard. That's because the paper needs sturdy wings in order to fly. But when your airplane's wings slice through the air, they create lift. As your plane moves, the wings push air out of the way. But the air has to go somewhere, so it quickly gets out of the way by moving up and over the wing. And the faster that air moves over the wing, the less time it has to push down on it. So the air above the wing is pushing on the plane less than the air below it. This force makes the plane go up. A big airplane needs more lift to get off the ground than a small airplane. That's why bigger planes need bigger wings. Now, the plane that you and I made doesn't have a whole lot of lift because the wings are so thin. So in order to fly, this airplane needs a whole lot of thrust, which means you need to throw it hard. But there are lots of different ways to make paper airplanes, all with different shapes that make the most out of the forces that help them fly. So the next time you're looking for a fun indoor activity, Okay, we're gonna pause it right there. So we're gonna pause it right there. We will be, you'll be doing some research today in order to get the best airplane you can make. And at least, again, so you can Just make- grab. You're gonna make the best design for next week. Ow. So I, I know we've all probably made paper airplanes. I'll be shocked. You know, maybe you haven't, but at least you've seen them being thrown. Maybe there's a design you always go to. What? I really want you to think outside the box for this one. So again, there are four forces acting on our paper airplane. We have thrust, we have lift, which is picking up our airplane. It lets it glide. We have gravity, which is always pulling every object down. And in this case, it's pulling our, um, our, our paper airplane down. And then we have drag, which is gonna slow our paper airplane down. So all those four forces, remember a force is just a push or a pull on an object. So some examples can be pushing a car. Um, another one is pulling a rope. Tug of war is really a good example. Other examples include, you might be pushing or kicking a, a game, or sorry, a ball in a soccer game, in a football game, closing a drawer, right, to try to get your clothes. Once you're done, you close it. Pushing a chair in, or just typing away at a keyboard. All of these are either a push or a pull, which is, which is what a force is. So again, remember, we have four of these forces. The first one we're gonna focus on is thrust. This one pushes and creates that forward movement. So in real airplanes, this is the engine on the side of the wing, right? But for our paper airplane, it's you. You are throwing it, you are creating the thrust. That's what's gonna push your airplane forward. So hopefully you'll have enough thrust, enough power, enough force to really make that um, airplane, paper airplane fly. The second one is a lift. And this is really based on the shape of the airplane as the video told us. So the plane's wing slice through the air, it creates that. As it's slicing, it creates this effect that kind of pushes our um, airplane up. So that's how it's gonna push across. That's why this is typically the shape of a wing. It pushes all of that air around the wings. And the faster it does this, the less time the air can push down the wing so that's why it starts kind of moving slowly up. It starts lifting it up. And always remember, bigger airplanes need more lift because they're bigger. That Therefore, they need larger wings. So keep that in mind as you're designing your paper airplane, right? More lift, you need larger wings. So again, bigger wings equals more lift. Same thing. Gravity, this is... You know, this is the force, this is the, the pull that, pu that pulls the plane down. Gravity is all around Earth, so it, it's what keeps you from floating into space, right? You jump, guess what? You're gonna come back down because gravity keeps pulling you down. Just remember that, pulls you down towards the Earth, towards the ground. And last but, but not least is drag. This is gonna slow your plane down. This is what slows the speed down. This is what slows the thrust down and that is the friction between the plane and the air and i want you to think about drag 
right? If you ever stuck your hand out of a window, right? Whenever you have your hand like this out and the air is hitting it, guess what? Your hand is kind of gliding. There's no, right? You don't feel any force on your hand if you ever stuck that outside a window. Now, if you turn your hand like this to face the air, you ever feel your hand just go back? That's exactly what happens. You're creating more drag. Notice how it's very angle, right? The air's flowing this way as you're, as you're in a car, um, right? In this shape, there's not a whole lot of drag. There is the least amount of drag. But once you make this area bigger, guess what? That air has nowhere to go. It's gonna hit your hand and it's gonna be more powerful. It's gonna create more force and it's gonna push your hand back. We'll try this out next time. You may have already tried it out. But you make sure you're safe though. I want you to just like stick your head out. That's not what I'm saying here. Another example is cars. So your sports cars, they're always really sleek. They always have like a really nice hood, kind of like this, um, I think it's a Corvette. The air has a smoother shape to go around the car. So it's gonna create less drag, least drag. Whereas a pickup truck or a trailer, or a tractor, they're gonna have a flatter surface. Notice, notice the front, it's a lot flatter. So it's gonna create more drag. That air is gonna be hitting it and it's not gonna smoothly go around um, the front of the truck. So now it's onto our brainstorming part. You may have already have um, a design you wanna use. I encourage you to go search right now. Go search, find, a, a link you might enjoy, a design you might enjoy, and include it in our form. So how do you do this? How do you find a design? You're gonna go to google.com, you're gonna search paper airplane designs, you're gonna find a couple you like, and then you're gonna paste them into the Google Forms. Also, make sure you save the link so you can use it for next week. So for example, I'm gonna go, like I said, to google.com, I'm gonna search up paper airplane, Oh, there it is, designs. You might see a couple of um, images. Maybe you might find a website, but let's say I pick this image. So I'm gonna click on it. I'm not, and what I'm gonna do is make sure that I'm gonna go to this link up here, this URL. I'm gonna highlight it, and then I'm gonna make sure I copy it. Once I copy it, I'm gonna go to my form and paste it. Okay, so if you like this design, let's say you like this design, I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna make sure I go to that website as well. That might be more helpful. And as long as you know which design you're doing, you copy that link and you paste it into your form. So for next week, we will build and test our airplanes. A big part of this, y'all, you'll notice is that you need to improve our airplanes. So Right, the first time you fly it, it might be really bad. But improving our airplane, and I'll give you some tips next week, um, will help your airplane fly further. Also, if you wanna practice at home during the week, before next week, by all means you can. And here, yeah, so mistakes will be made. This was my first flight. You remember my video where my airplane flew really far? This was the first one. Paper airplane, I just built it. I've seen it. <laughs> so <laughs> you see, I made adjustments. That was my first try outside. I made adjustments. I folded the airplane a little bit more. I created more lift. And guess what? It flew all the way to the soccer post. That's about 30 yards. So again, I'll give you some more tips next week. Have fun brainstorming, have fun uh, researching and let me know if you have any questions, y'all. All right, that's it. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Peace.